Hey everybody, welcome back. So first let me say I am having a boatload of fun with my new resin printer and you can see all the things I've printed with it. There is something printing in it now and I'm going to touch base more on that in my next video. But this video is about FDM printers and in particular how to troubleshoot them and in particular this FDM printer in particular, my Gitech A10M. Now for full disclosure, this printer was provided to me for the purpose of a review, which I did 10 months ago, which I found it to be a really nice printer. I still think it's a really nice printer. And after the enclosed Ender 3 that I can print ABS and nylon and ASA and that kind of polycarbonate on, it is my second most valuable printer. Why? Because A, it prints really well, and B, I can make different colors without having to go buy a new roll of filament for every single color that I want. As long as I have the base colors in black and white, there's not much I can't get out of it, including gradients and color changes. So for me, it has been really valuable. Somebody wants light green, I put on green and white, I get light green. They want dark green, I swap the white for the black and I get dark green. But lately, it's been acting really crazy. Now, the last time you saw this printer was probably when I swapped the two, the two gear reduction Titan clone type extruders for these two Creality style dual gear extruders. Since then, it's been printing beautifully. And this is printed at 0.2 layer height. And look at the type of, assuming the camera will focus. And excuse me, I'm using my, I'm using my phone camera here because it just does better for this type of thing. And of course, I did this 10 times earlier and it focused just fine, but it is not going to focus today. Well, that is life, isn't it? Anyway, this was 0.32 layer height and it just prints very nicely, very, very nicely. Every bit is good, if not better, than my Ender 3s do. And the ability to make different colors and color changes is, like I say, proven really valuable to me. And I also get a whole lot of questions about Hey Chuck, my printer doesn't work. What's wrong? And I'll get some generic problem they're having. And then I'll say, well, did you do, and I'll name a few really basic troubleshooting steps and they'll say no. And that kind of makes it tough because now I have to walk them through really basic troubleshooting. So in this video, I thought, A, I would cover the problem that I had with my Gitech A10M and the solution I found that fixed it. And I would cover how to basic troubleshoot a printer. And this kind of basic troubleshooting applies to almost anything mechanical or electrical. And the first thing we want to do is we want to break down our device into systems. We have a feed system. We have a hot end system. We have a bed system. We have an electronic system. We have a power system. And we have a movement system with all the rollers. And each one of those systems can be broken further down into subsystems. Our feed mechanism here has two extruders. It has a, a roll of filament. It has a spring. It has gears. Our hot end has a nozzle. It, if it's, it has a cooling tower. It has a heat break. So as you start to identify individual systems, you then break it, that system down into subsystems and you start looking for which subsystem could be causing the problem. Now, I am not going to denigrate just shotgun effect because sometimes you win. One time when I worked for a car dealership and I was the troubleshooting guy on almost anything electrical, I had a car that had a short to ground in the lighting system. It would blow fuses. I mean, you couldn't put a fuse in it and pop, it, was, it would be done the first time you did almost anything with the car. And I thought, you know, what's the easiest thing to check? Let's check the easiest thing first, because they were paying me by the hour. And that was a big downgrade for me getting paid by the hour, because I was a flat rate tech. I checked the dome light and found the pinched wire, and they expected to keep me tied up on this car for days at, at an hourly wage, which would be probably about a fourth what I would normally make. So I lucked out. Doesn't happen all the time, but when it's quick and easy, it's worth trying. But once you get to that point where you've tried the quick and easy things and you haven't found it, it's time to move on to some real troubleshooting. So first ask yourself what system is causing the problem. And also, I wanted you guys to know the chassis of these things, the frame it's built at, built on, is also a system. The extrusions, the nuts and the bolts, the way you assemble it, it's a system as well. If you put this thing together and it's out of square, and by square I mean you measure from this corner to this corner, 
and from that corner to this corner, and those measurements should be either identical or very, very close. If it's more than 3 16 out of square, you got a problem. It may still work. You may be able to make that adjustment up someplace else, but it needs to be square. It needs to be tight. If the bolt, if the screw head screws went in and stripped going in and you couldn't tighten them, you're going to have a problem. So if you go to print the print, if you go to print something and it goes clankety clankety and shakes all around, maybe you need to look at the chassis system. But beyond that, the first thing, does it turn on? If it doesn't power up, you check the receptacle, you check your power cord, you check your power supply, you check power to the control board. Now you've fig pretty much figured it out. If you have no power to the control board, but you have power going into the power supply, you've got a bad power supply. Now, you can break the power supply down into a subsystem and you can work on it, but for the most, most of us are just going to go buy another $25 Chinese power supply. And again, does it print? But the, one of the hardest things to troubleshoot on these is poor printing, because that can not only be almost any system on the printer, it can also be an outside system like your slicer. Now the slicer is easy to diagnose. Find something for that printer from the manufacturer that's pre-sliced, the dog, you know, whatever, and print it. If it prints okay, it's probably something you're doing in the slicer. So let's say you turn it on, it powers up, but it doesn't, nothing comes out the hot end. Well, first thing, is the hot end getting hot? If it is, and the extruder is feeding, your problem is somewhere between here and coming out the hot end. It could be a clogged nozzle. It could be a plugged up Bowden tube. I can't tell you how many plugged up Bowden tubes I've seen. I've had it happen to me. So that's how you diagnose something like this. You break it down into systems. You try and identify which system the problem is coming from, and you're not, probably not going to get it right the first try. And then you try and break that down into subsystems. Now, if you believe the problem is the extruder, and you have another one on the other side, swap them. See if the problem moves with the part you swap. If the problem moves with the part you swap, you've identified it. If it doesn't move, then it's not the problem. So it's simple, basic troubleshooting steps like that that can help you solve the problem. But even if you can't, telling me those steps will help me help you solve the problem. So let's talk about my GTEC A10M. Let's look at what it was doing. And, and note that this isn't the last thing I did to it. There was something else, and I took that into account, and I'm going to tell you about it in a bit. But let's just take a quick look at something. One of the first ones, and it started doing this a little bit at a time, and then it would get worse and worse and worse. So can you see this? Can you see those loops of filament? Every now and again, the, um, the hot end would move to either X or Y home and then right back and start printing again and leave me these loops of filament. At first it was very small like this, and then it started getting worse and worse and worse, and pretty soon it wouldn't print at all. I mean, it was doing this, it was just going crazy. And I was also getting pauses. Every now and again it would pause for about five seconds and then continue printing as if nothing happened. And then it, eventually at some point, even the extruder came into the mix the extruder I was trying to print from would start retracting like crazy, 100 millimeters as fast as it could. Now, I'm going, whoa, what's going on here? So before the extrusion craziness came on, and I was just looking at the, the hot end going from X and Y and back again, I thought, now, what could be causing that? What system could be causing that? And my first thought was, I've got a bad card, because I've had that happen to me before. These cards that come with Chinese printers oftentimes are the cheapest ones they can possibly come up with, and I have had that happen. So I formatted the card and tested it. It tested okay. I still had the problem. I tried a different card. In fact, the one out of my regular video camera still had the problem, so I ruled the card out. So then I started thinking, okay, what could cause this? Could it be that it's waiting for the, could the temperature of the nozzle have dropped and could it be waiting for that to heat back up? That describes the pause, but it doesn't necessarily describe the travel to home of X or Y. But then I remembered, wait, Chuck, the last time you had the hot end apart to replace a fan, you broke the bulb thermistor and you replaced it with a screw-in thermistor. So maybe it is heat. And also, 
I didn't go into the firmware and tell the firmware I had a different type of thermistor. Now, I have replace those thermistors before. Sometimes I've told the firmware I have, sometimes I haven't, and be quite frank, I haven't noticed a difference. Still, it's bad practice. The, the correct thermistor number is available for that. So I went into the firmware, I changed, and I'd already flashed the firmware once trying to fix this problem and couldn't fix it. So I went back into the firmware, I switched the thermistor value over to the correct one to number 11 for my screw and thermistor. I put it back together, printed, and had the same problem. So I thought, okay, maybe I need, because I noticed the temperature would fluctuate up and down a couple of degrees, and it really shouldn't. So I thought, okay, maybe I need to auto-tune it again. So I went in and I did the auto-tuning, and I printed again, and it still had the problem. So at some point along in this way, I had to stop because I had other things that needed to be printed, and I brought the other print, another printer over, and I printed my stuff, and I've just recently gotten back to trying to solve my problem on this printer. So I started looking around the internet, and then the ret crazy retraction started, and that hasn't happened before. And I thought to myself, okay, crazy retractions don't have anything to do with heat. So what could be the problem with the crazy retractions? And eventually, I got brought back around to the card. So I, got, I bought a new card. I bought a brand new Samsung card from a trusted source. I put it in. I formatted it properly. I put a print on it, and it still did it. So I thought, okay, maybe it's Cura. I had already tried something pre-printed, but, you know, a pre-sliced model, and it still did it. But I thought, okay, I don't know. I'm, I'm running out of things I can try because so far I still haven't identified the system I believe the problem is coming from. So I installed Idea Maker. I've had it in before, but that dark gray on light gray color scheme just wrecks my eyes. So I put it in again, and happily enough, found it now has a light color scheme to choose from. I got my settings in for the A10M. I printed, I sliced something, I put it in, and I had the exact same problem. So once again, I came back to this and corrupt G-code. So finally, and a lot of you are thinking, hey, Chuck, why didn't you do this next step right at the beginning? I plugged the printer in via the USB cable, and I printed something directly from Cura, and it printed fine. I had none of the problems. Well, I didn't trust it, so I did it again and it printed fine, and I had no problems. And I still didn't trust it, so I did it again, and it printed fine, and I had no problems. So I'm thinking to myself, you know, I really don't want to replace that, L that whole LCD panel with the, um, with the card slot on it, because for starters, those are getting kind of hard to find. And I mean, they're only like 15 bucks when you do find them, but I really... I, I, unfortunately, I don't have a replacement cable. I unplug the cable. I check both ends of the cable and all the pins. They all, none are bent. They all look fine. And I took the LCD panel out. I blasted it full of contact cleaner. And then I um, blew it out with compressed air. I blasted it out with this stuff. You guys might be familiar with electronic cleaner. And I blasted it out with compressed air to dry it. And I tried it all again, and I, I visually inspected it with a magnifying glass, and there's no corrosion, <coughs> excuse me, no bent contacts, nothing. I don't, as I said, I don't have another cable, so I couldn't try that. So I did have one of these laying around, and I bought this when I first, when I bought the 3D Touch bed sensor, and I've never used it. So I do have one of these laying around, and this, what this lets you do is this plugs into, it has... It has a little power cord, and I'm just using a little an old phone charger I had in a drawer to power it, and then a USB cable, and it plugs into the USB port on the front of the printer. And then you put an app, and you connect it to your home Wi-Fi. Then there's an app on the phone, and I, I hear now there's a, an app for the computer, but I haven't put it on. I'm just using the one for the phone, and it lets you print two different ways. You can print via stuff from the internet, or you can put stuff on a card, and it's got a little a little micro SD card slot in it. And once again, it prints perfectly from there. So I'm back to the initial idea that it's the card, but it's not the card itself. It appears to be either a faulty card slot 
a faulty cable or something on the control board that's reading the card slot because I really don't see anything wrong with the card slot itself. So that's all I have for you guys today. The printer prints perfectly now as long as I don't attempt to print from the, the card slot built onto the LCD panel. I would eventually like to get this back working right, but let me know your thoughts and ideas of troubleshooting printers and um, maybe troubleshooting this one in particular if you're one of the A10M community. Geetech's A10M community on their website uh, kind of leaves something to be desired. But nonetheless, let me know what you think. Let me know your solutions and the way you go about solving 3D printer problems. And um, maybe in the meantime, I'll try and find a replacement LCD board for this and see if that fixes it. Hope you guys are having a great day and taking care of yourself and being safe. And I'll catch you all the next time. Bye for now.